In the mid-1980s, High Sierra Sport Company had made its name as a familiar manufacturer of outdoor and foul weather gear. Today, High Sierra is one of the largest outdoor companies in the United States, distributing a massive inventory of adventure travel gear to over 1,500 retailers and 2,200 corporate accounts worldwide. In the early days, there wasn't a whole lot of budgeting. There wasn't a whole lot of forecasting. You recognize what values were all about, what kind of margin you could make, and if you saw a product that you thought the marketplace would respond to, you, you went for it. The retail world began to consolidate and change. Uh, budgeting and inventory control uh, did become a bigger part of our, our daily operations. It was either do that or make more mistakes than we could afford to sustain. At this company, what we try to do is budget as realistically as we possibly can. We really try to use just a classic financial budgeting process, which begins in the fourth quarter of the year, where we start with a sales forecast. Based upon the sales forecast, um, we'll come back and we'll put together a financial plan for the next year and it is then checked on a monthly basis against our actual results uh, to determine how we're doing versus our guide. Using the company's continuous budgeting philosophy, High Sierra looked at the largest accounts. Using the 80-20 rule, the company forecasts sales based on prior year performance. The 80-20 rule applied to sales means that 80% of the sales come from 20% of its product line. Some collections were discontinued. New product launches were budgeted for. In forecasting our budgets, we look at the top customers that are doing 80% of our volume. Um, we forecast them out on an account-by-account account basis for the next year, looking at product extensions uh, or product deletions. In some cases, we may have to take someone backwards or down. Uh, then we take the balance of the accounts, the other 20%, and we just apply a flat, fixed percentage to those small mom-and-pop accounts that aren't really going to swing the overall volume one way or the other. Control is achieved through participatory budgeting. Managers are held accountable only for controllable costs. Planning for larger than normal growth means budgeting for more personnel, increased travel and related expenses. These are prepared on a monthly basis and require approval from the president of the company. I probably have in my mind four or five people I'd like to hire for different new positions that I could create um, if I thought that I didn't have to worry about overhead. Um, the fact is, is that we are very conscious of our yearly profit and, and we know that we want it to grow. Um, and so you have to discipline yourself when you do decide to add somebody and make sure that that addition of um, someone new is, is really essential and will bear the fruit immediately um, to generating and offsetting the overhead you're adding and adding to your profit picture. Pro forma balance sheets are used as planning tools. Once the sales forecast is approved, each department head provides his budget, including such variables as personnel. The senior VP of sales and operations reviews each forecasted account with the given sales manager to understand the reasoning behind the forecasted numbers and to make any necessary adjustments. We have sales managers for each one of our um, distribution classifications and um, we ask them to do their sales budgets. We sit down with each of them and, and they in turn go out to their sales force and they look at their primary accounts and they budget whether those accounts are in an upward trend or a downward trend in the relationships we might have with them. The sales managers go back to our chief uh, operations officer who they report to and uh, they have some meetings where they really go over whether or not the, the budgets that have been, the sales budgets that have been submitted by each division are realistic or not. And then that is in turn put together um, as a collective expectation for what the company will do in terms of its quarterly or monthly sales and in turn its yearly sales. Based on the master budget, 
High Sierra expanded its high-performing adventure travel lines and also introduced new day packs and wheeled book bags. A three-year cycle for a luggage collection is about right. Uh, we're constantly reinventing or redoing uh, key collections every two and a half to three years. And we basically gauge that off of the marketplace, maybe some changes have taken place in the market, new features that the consumer uh, is more in want and need of than we have in our existing collection, so we'll redo a collection to you know, garner more interest and spruce it up for the market. The company compares actual results with budgeted results on a periodic basis. These results will be used in planning next year's budget. Where did the company go wrong? What, if anything, can be changed for the following year? We have had in the past to, you know, to eliminate certain total lines of product to become a more profitable company. Today, you know, the sky's the limit because we've been able to really, really focus our efforts on our bags, get an idea what you think is going to be the profitable part of your business and then devote yourself to it. Just like that 80-20 rule. Just, just dive right in to what's going to really pay the bills.